she for your family? channel about creating and using hand spun yarn. My name is Lisa and I can be found on social media as the Soulful Spinner. So how is everybody today? It's Friday the 24th of April here and I'm uh, right outside Chicago and I just wrapped up another week of e-learning at school which is going a lot better than uh, it, it did at the beginning. I am a uh, getting used to communicating with kids through Google, but uh, it doesn't replace the actual face-to-face -face teaching for sure. So uh, how was your week? I hope you had a, a good week. It's hard to say during this pandemic if you had a good week. You, you know, I don't know. People are suffering quite a bit right now. I hope uh, this finds you well and you're doing okay. Uh, before I get started in my knitting and spinning today, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone that has responded to my um, episodes in the comments. I've gotten some private messages in Ravelry, um, through my email, uh, on Instagram, and it's just so wonderful hearing from you, knowing that I'm talking to this camera, but I'm actually talking to real people out there. And I've really met people from really all over the world. Somebody from Australia, uh, Wales, Scotland, the Netherlands, uh, it's France. It's just been really fun. Really a lot of fun. So just keep, keep those comments and messages coming. I can use all the pen pals I can get during this time, especially during this time. So, so today I went over to uh, the grocery store this morning, which was you know, it's sort of traumatic having to <laughs> go to the grocery store because <laughs> you have to be masked. People are standing in line. It's just really, I'm still not used to it. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Um, I always like going to the market and going grocery shopping. My husband and I love to go grocery shopping and uh, it's just not any fun anymore. It's just like in and out, you know, who know that going to the, to the grocery store is like a perilous activity. My dog's barking at somebody over there. She always freaks out on Fridays when I set up the camera. She, she has no idea what's going on. But anywho, I hope everybody's well and I hope you had a good week. So in today's episode, I don't like to call it an episode. It's my little, my little corner of the internet. It's just a little visit, a little chat with you. So today I'm going to talk about my knitting and spinning and I wanted to talk about one of my favorite spindle makers and I want to talk about my very first drop spindle that I bought. So I'm going to talk about this a little later in the episode. So what's been going on this week? Not, not too much to report in the um, knitting sphere. Still plugging away at my Felix cardigan by Amy Christoffers. I'm using this yarn here, which is a nice woolly wool, Alpen Glow, it's a, from Green Mountain Spinnery. This is my last skein here. This is how it balls up. So it's just, uh, it's not, they're not very large skeins, but they, they spit slice very, very well. So uh, I've gotten one sleeve done such a slow knitter. But in fairness to me, I do have a full-time job, so it's not like I'm sitting around knitting all day. But 
I have a sleeve. I'm just trying to figure out how long to make it. I have extremely long arms. Every time I buy a commercial sweater, blouse, or anything, it's always too short. Uh, so she says 15 inches or three inches shorter than you want it to be. I'm already at 16. It's still not long enough. So still working away on that sleeve. And um, what I was thinking of doing is instead of starting the sleeve next, I thought of doing the button band next, the picking up the stitches all the way around and doing that part of the finishing and then, or that part of the knitting and then do the sleeve. So hopefully, hopefully I'll have it done by the fall. <laughs> I'm gonna stop here for just a minute. My puppy, she's always on the alert for intruders. <laughs> it was a good thing because I forgot something upstairs where my wheel is. Um, so yeah, so the, the cardigan is moving along. Um, you know, I'm, I don't care about my speed. Um, I'm just enjoying the process, though I would like to have a finished sweater sometime in the near future. I'm drinking a chai tea out of this mug. I know all the podcasters show their tea, but and it's it's fun. But this is really cool because it's got sheep, sheep's. This is this is a Jacob. I think this is a Scottish blackface. Uh, this might uh, no, this is the Scottish blackface. On the back, I think it's got it. Okay. Of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna spill. So, yeah, on the back it says what it is. So I've got, I don't have my glasses on, Suffolk, Jacob, Dalesbred, and Herdwick. So I know for sure that's the Jacob. And that's probably the Herdwick here. I think they're dark. So sheep. Every time... Uh, Every time we're out and about and we see anything with sheep, we're always like, sheep, squirrel, you know. <laughs> so that's that's Julie's wrap. No. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> so that was that's the Felix cardigan that I, I'm plugging away on. And then the other thing I've been knitting on, uh, just like the last uh, couple of weeks, is my Julie's wrap. And I knit on this when I have I have these virtual meetings with uh, people at work. I'm a school teacher, and one of the girls set up a a Google Hangout. So it's every day we have coffee. You know, from 9:15 to about 10 o'clock, we sit and chat like we would if we were at school and had lunch together. So we basically recreated our lunch table online. So I just sit and knit, and um, or spin on my spindle. Well, we just chit chat and visit. Think about where we would be without the internet and social media. I mean, for all the negatives that there are, I mean, we're so lucky that we can connect this way. So lucky. So that's Julie's wrap. It's I'm plugging along. Like I said, it's just garter, 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 and I can do it while I'm, I'm just talking. I don't have to think about any pattern or anything. So not much in the knitting uh, segment really, but I do have some spinning and I do have a new fleece that I bought. So let's get into the spinning content. All right, so what have I been working on? Um, I, I have a lot of braids of fiber that are dyed that I need to really get get spinning just so I can clear it out of my 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 room with all my my stash so I am I'm spinning this right here this is this is ingle nook fiber it's a cheviot Tussa Silk and Rami. It's a 65, 65 Cheviot, 25 Tussa Silk, and 10% Rami, which is a plant fiber, I think. It's 4.9 ounces. And this braid was dyed so that 
we went from purple to all the way to the lighter green to the white and then the other half was symmetric it was white light green and purple so you could just cut it instead of having to strip it down and you just take the whole braid and cut it exactly in half and get matching uh, matching color so I'm just going to do a two ply and it's 4.9 ounces so I've got my lendrum here and I was really packing it on here and I just couldn't finish the rest so what I did is I spun the rest on here now in order to keep the color progression I spun from the other end so I'd been spinning 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 and then when I did this one I spun from the very end of the braid back to this part here so that when I ply these together it'll be one continuous color so I'm going to just do a two ply gradient here and I'm working on my worsted draw on this um, you know I have the heart and hands of a woolen spinner true and true I just I love woolen spinning I think Fran uh, from um, Woolen Hearted I think she's she's the same way and she's working on her worsted draw I know and if you haven't checked out Fran's uh, podcast um, I highly recommend it she's such a gentle soul and makes the most beautiful tiny little bears mohair bears unbelievable detail just absolutely gorgeous but she she's working on her worsted draw too so you know the forward smooth down forward smooth down I always want to default back to woolen I was talking to um, Angela from the yarn and yarns podcast another fantastic podcast and she's got a ton of content um, she does her regular episodes and then she also does her yarn and yarn extras and Angela you are such a natural on camera I mean she's just so relaxed you know there's nothing forced or artificial about her she's just she's just a natural on camera I, I admire her so much plus she lives in Wales and she always brings us to the beach near her home I can't imagine being able to live near a beach like that it would be so wonderful but she's working on her woolen spinning because she keeps defaulting to her worsted so I think it's whatever you you sort of took to when you started spinning and it takes a mindfulness and intention to change your way of spinning but you really I'm trying to be a more versatile spinner to create the different yarns that uh, for different purposes boy I am talking a lot today so that's so that's the Ingle Nooks, Ingle Nook Fiber Bat. Ingle Nook Fibers is, um, they're these um, Orthodox nuns that live in Massachusetts, Holy Nativity Convent, I think it is, and uh, Mother Macrina does the dyeing, and she used to be on Etsy, but now she has her own online shop, and uh, hard to get a hold of her fibers. It's She does amazing work. Um, highly recommend her. Uh, her shop if you can ever grab a hold of some of her fiber all right so let's talk about my new fleece <laughs> made a little unboxing video that I'll insert here showing you um, what it looked like and some of the detail I thought I would do just a little quick unboxing video I got something from uh, Laura Moxley uh, she's on Etsy and she is a breeder of thin sheep I had purchased some yarn from her some years ago and I saw that she had a badger faced uh, thin fleece for sale so um, so some years ago I had I had bought a thin fleece from uh, I can't remember the breeders name and it was a badger faced ewe and it was so pretty it was uh, full of grays and cream colors but it was sort of a easily felted fleece and unfortunately I actually ruined it it's one of the few fleeces I feel like I sort of failed so uh, when I saw that she had a badger face uh, fleece for sale I, uh, I jumped on this and I'm going to show you today what it looks like um, there's a little bit of wind out here in my backyard today but uh, let's see what we've got in the box so I opened it up <clears throat> kind of a, a, a funny not funny story is the last fleece I had of this style I went in my um, in my uh, 
anxiousness to open up the package, I actually tore my, ripped my hand. I have a scar here, right here. I was opening the box with a Swiss Army knife and I sliced my finger. I had to get nine stitches uh, just opening up a fleece. So, you know, do be careful when you get a fleece in the mail. Take your time and uh, don't cut yourself when you open it up. So I got a nice note here. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. It's um, Finn Sheep Raw Fleece, Black Badger Faced. Her name is Bella. She's two pounds, 12 ounces. Two and a half to four inch staple length. So fins tend to have small, uh, small fleeces, and so uh, it's a nice one to have if you don't want to commit to a larger fleece. Kind of windy out here. So here it is. Um, I'll go ahead and open it up and let you see what it looks like. It always cracks me up how, how they can uh, squeeze these fleeces into these boxes, and it's in a brick shape. So it is shaped like a rectangular prism here. <laughs> Super excited. So uh, once you open up the bag, you can kind of see how it just starts to expand and fluff out. So I think sometimes people use uh, vacuum sealers to seal out, get all the air out to get them into, uh, into the box. So I opened it up. It looks exactly like it did in the picture. Here's the tag. So she, she told me that it was not coated, but she must have skirted it extremely well because um, I see nothing in here. Let's get out of the shadow here. You're getting this? So this is the fleece. This is a cream color here. And then it's got this taupey gray here. Look at the crimp on that. Can you see the crimp on that? It's really beautiful. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the fin sheep in this episode. I think it's one of the northern uh, short-tailed breeds. It's sort of in the same category as Shetlands and Icelandics. Um, They're very prolific. They have uh, several lambs. And I think it's considered uh, on the fine end of the medium spectrum, though I see this fleece has the brown edges on the sides, which is more around the belly. And this is gonna be coarser wool here. And I could just feel it doesn't have the crimp as the rest of the fleece, but it feels quite soft. I don't think it's a dual coated breed but I just think that the, this brown along the belly, but there is, uh, it's very, very clean. Here, this piece here, I hope you can see all the crimp on this. Um, uh, this is around, this is from the neck, you can see all the little curlies. It's really beautiful, it's not too greasy. I think it's fairly low in lanolin. That's the other thing they talk about with the fins. They're low in lan lanolin, low in grease, and so your a weight you get it after scouring is uh, is better than like a fine breed like a merino where you lose uh, like 50% to lanolin and grease. I just wanted to show you that there is some brown here that's quite crimpy and fine along with this which I think is the Bridge wool. So this is the amount I have to wash here. It's a variety of colors and I'm going to give it a cold soak and a scour and I'll let you know what it looks like. So this is a sample of my fin fleece from Moxley Farm uh, drying on my drying rack. It's just a few ounces. It's this beautiful silver light silver gray here and then it has it's still kind of wet here it's still damp and it's got some darker grays a little hay seed or something in there it's okay it comes right out so you've got this silvery gray look at those curls they're so cute 
And then I did take some of this too, which there's some uh, black. And some of it's crimpy and fine like the rest of the fleece, but some of it is um, very coarse. So you can see this is more like a an intermediate Shetland fleece. Almost looks slightly, slightly dual coated there. But the most of the fleece is like this. So there's some variation in uh, types of fiber here. So I, I hope you enjoyed that. I get so excited when I get a fleece, as you can tell. Um, if you've been watching me at all, I, I, I'm kind of a nut when it comes to a fleece. Um, it's a small one, and I always say, I, I kind of justify it by saying that she's a small producer, she lives in Missouri, I wrote her and I told her how I've been looking for this particular type of fleece and you know, she said, oh, you made my day and she was just so happy that she got the sale. And I just feel like I'm doing a good deed by supporting a, a you know, smaller farm. So this is what I have washed up so far in this basket. And it, as you can see, it's, it's a light silvery gray. And these just have the cutest little curls you ever saw. It's on the shorter side, but I hope you can see those little curls. And so she's this fleece, Bella, which means beautiful, and she is. I got the, there's different shades. So there's, there's light and then there's darker shades here, which I'll show you. Let's see if I can get a variety of colors here to show you. So pretty. So yeah, so here's some of the, the dark, the medium, I'd say medium gray. And then there's this, which is the dark brown. And the dark brown has got a variety of, of qualities. So some of the brown is very coarse. So here, I'll show you this part of the fleece here in comparison to the other part. Mm -hmm. See how this brown? It almost reminds me of a Shetland, and as a matter of fact, it's slightly dual coated. So I can take these tips here and pull those out. And those are, it's like tog in an Icelandic fleece. So it's still very beautiful. It's, it's just on the coarser side. I actually did a tiny, tiny sample of that. I don't know what I did with that. I've got so many things here, it's not even funny. I think it would make a really nice uh, heavy sock, you know, or um, maybe a, just anything that would be something would require a stronger, a stronger fleece. But you can see there's really hardly any crimp at all. Now, if you compare that with this, now, I don't know, I, one of my viewers has fin sheep in Australia, and I'd love to know if her fins are like this. Um, it, it's really interested in the breed. So here's the, see how it's crimpy? I hope you can see that, the crimp there. And this is really, really soft. This is more brown. Let me see if you can see this. And this is also very, very fine and crimpy, so, so pretty. So what am I gonna do with this? Well, I, this is just a small portion. It was this tiny fleece. It was two pounds, 12 ounces, I think. So what I'm going to do is take the, that coarser brown fiber and spin that up separately and use it for something that requires a sturdier yarn, maybe mittens or pot holder or something. Maybe a pair of boot socks or something. It's, it's like tog. Here's the, the stuff that I pulled out. It's very, very strong. Um, so I'm thinking of just fluffing it up and uh, trying just to spin from the fluff to get a textured yarn just to kind of keep some of these little curls. I just hate to comb or card this because it's so cute. So I might do a small amount from the lock 
And I think that would be really fun in a gnome. I know Angela makes, she's kind of obsessed with these little gnomes that she makes and she makes them with her hand spun and they're so cute. They're really, really cute. And I thought, well, if I lock spin this, this could be the beard on the gnome. So I think that's what I'm gonna do, just a spin enough for a sort of an accent on a, and the gnome, it didn't look like it was too hard to knit, like there weren't a lot of intricate pieces. It was basically just kind of a teardrop shape and then a hat. And uh, I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, the other thing this would be great for is, is needle felting. So if you were gonna make a little creature or something, you could, you could needle felt this and have all these wonderful little curls, which would be really fun. All right, I think I've talked long enough about this fin fleece. <laughs> Yesterday on the 23rd, I posted a video on dr my drum carter. I used my Clemens and Clemens drum carter and I showed you how I, I show how to use it to make a bat. So I made this, it's over 100 grams here of this white fiber. And this is mohair Shetland comb top and a little bit of sparkle, not a lot. So this is going to go on my wheel soon. I made two bats. I made that one and I made this gray, which is Shetland again. I, I love Shetland. So this is a nice gray fleece. I love a gray fleece. I've been processing this Coriadale uh, that, I, that I've shown a couple of times. This was the Coriadale that I got from Elizabeth Hubbard who lives in Bonanza, Oregon. And I'm combing this up with my Valkyrie combs and I'm creating these little nests here. That one's attached to a spindle. So I went from this to these little comb nests and I'm spinning these up on a drop spindle. I start I've got an empty spindle and I've got my fiber so what I like to do is is hook take the hook just snag the fiber grab the fiber and then just start spinning with my hand and I'm just gonna keep doing that doing that doing that now sometimes right now I can chat test and voila <laughs> it is not going anywhere so now you've got your leader. So now I can spin some more, get some strength in there. Do a little drafting. It's still spinning, this spindle spins for so long. So well balanced, still spinning. All right, so now I'm going to butterfly. It's just a figure eight. See, it's still spinning. Keep tension on your yarn, otherwise it'll get all twisted on itself. And now we wrap it around the spindle many, many times to make it nice and secure. I like to get that tail nice and secure under tension. And now I have a good beginning here. And I have about, about six or eight inches here. I know you can't see it because it's brown but you then uh, put it in the notch and then put it on the hook. So if you're interested, uh, I was thinking of doing a series on spindle spinning from beginning to end. I don't know if that's something that you think I should put out there to the non-spinners uh, of the world. I know there's a lot of videos on how to spin with a drop spindle. Uh, do you have an opinion on that? Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts.
So this is one of my Kundert spindles, K-U-N-D-E-R-T. This is a maker, I don't know if he still makes spindles, I meant to look that up before I recorded. I was going to, if he is still making spindles, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description box. I wanted to talk today a little bit about my very first spindle that I ever bought. And it's the same maker as this one here. So I purchased this spindle uh, at Stitches Midwest many, many years ago. It's one and a half grams. No, it's one, yeah, one and one point five ounces. I'll put the grams right here. And it's made out of cherry. And it was a Wisconsin maker. And I had no idea how to even use a drop spindle when I bought this. But this was my, this was the gateway drug right here. <laughs> it's this first spindle. So I thought I would show you this spindle. And I've got two others by the same maker. He lives in Wisconsin, so he's uh, I consider that local to me. We go up to Wisconsin on vacation. So I wanted to show you these three spindles. I thought maybe in, in episodes I might showcase some of the makers. So these are my three spindles. Don't they look like flowers? So uh, this one's the heaviest one at one and a half ounces. And then both of these I ordered at the same time. They're about one ounce, they're about 30 grams. And they're all American wood, you know, walnut, cherry. Uh, this might be maple here. And they're really affordable. So we were at the, this, I can't remember the booth, the booth that I was in. But this nice lady had these spindles and I bought one. So what's, do you have spindles and what, what kind of spindles do you like to use? Like, do you have a, a favorite maker? I kind of stopped buying spindles because they have plenty, but I have quite a number of different makers. And I'm just curious, um, do you have a favorite maker if you have a spindle? I'd love to hear about it and check out their shop. Um, so uh, what I'm doing with this is I am spinning, I'm spinning my, my little nests here of Corydale, a lovely, lovely spinner. I guess the, the neat thing about, about this is it's, it's not fancy wood. It's not like rosewood or tulip wood. It's just simple, maple, walnut, cherry, and they're local to my area. So I think it's just, they're just kind of special. And this one has a really pretty spin. sheltering in place till the end of May and we're talking at school uh, getting plans for the fall in case we don't start in person in the fall so I mean really everything you're doing right now everything I'm doing is just overshadowed by this pandemic my husband and I were talking yesterday he said we feel like we're in the center of a storm like there's this you know like the eye of a hurricane or something you know that there's just all this chaos and suffering and bad news and you know it's really hard for me to put that aside and you know and then if I don't listen to the news I feel like well should I be listening and knowing what's going on I I really am avoiding most of the news I just watch a, a little bit just to know what's going on but uh, yeah it'll be just so nice to be able to you know, see my family again, see my sister again, you know, give hugs again. This 
this is a little black sheep. This is um, made in Germany. And I bought this at FAO Schwartz a long time ago. I think I was in my 30s. And it was before I was in love with sheep. I guess I always thought maybe I was kind of the black sheep of the family. And I've hung on to this little guy. So cute. Are you a black sheep of your family? Put him up here on top of the basket. And the llama here is keeping me company. So I really appreciate you watching me um, keeping me company um, hope you're you know whatever you're doing I have one lady um, messaged me and she said oh I'm weaving and spinning while I listen to you and it's just it makes me feel not so alone and uh, you know it's just it's just really heartwarming to me so thanks for your company today I really appreciate it I know I say that every week but I truly Hope you have a good week, uh, a safe week. You know, it's hard to say, have a great week or have a good weekend. And it's like, there's a pandemic. How can you even say that to someone? But I, I hope you have peace in your life. I, I hope you have, you know, enough, you know, all your needs being met. And I hope you're finding plenty of crafting time. So I'm going to say goodbye now. And I will see you next week for another uh, visit. And again, thanks for your company and please do take care.